started playing guitar when uh, I was probably around about nine or ten years old. It was actually in my father's shop, which was just up the road, that I actually saw my cousins who'd got, the three of them had got guitars for Christmas. And as soon as I saw the guitars that they got, I wanted one. And uh, I've never stopped since. The very first band was pretty well all school friends and guys that were local in the area. And then uh, when I went to high school, uh, I met Kerry, uh, who has been a long life friend of mine and, and a musician that we've played together in bands, various bands, and still play together. We met Mickey, who became the singer of Matter Lake. And Mickey's best friend was Jack, who became the original drummer of Matter Lake. And Jack and Mick knew Johnny, who was the keyboard player. So that completed the, the, the lineup of Matter Lake. I trained as a graphic artist, but I got very discouraged with, with uh, the commercial world of graphic art and, and all of that. And obviously music was a far bigger attraction to me. And uh, much to my parents' dismay, I walked out of my final year exam and went touring with Matter Lake. If my mum and dad were still alive, they'd say, yeah, that was a real piss off. But as far as I was concerned, it was the smartest thing I ever could have done. I'd like to welcome you all to Sunbury. And thanks very much for coming, right? The Sunbury festivals were an attempt to sort of create the Woodstock vibe of, uh, of America. The Sunbury experience was absolutely fantastic. It was a really exciting time. All the main bands of, of that era that were, had any profile and any sort of following obviously were included in Sunbury and we did all the Sunburys. I was unbelievably nervous when I, we were doing Sunbury but the mere fact of when you get up on stage and everything's starting to work and you, you're playing and that, most of the nerves subside. The classic thing with us with Sunbury is that Queen were on before us and we were probably at the peak of our, our uh, fame at that point. In Australia, Queen were a relatively unknown quantity. They made the mistake of fart assing around before starting to play, and what es essentially they were trying to do was stall off the time, because it was late in the afternoon and they wanted to get the light show happening. And they stalled and stalled and stalled, and to the point of where they just riled the Australian audience, and the last thing you want to do is before you go on, is piss off an Australian audience because they'll give you hell. And they did exactly that. And people were booing them off stage. And when we came on, we just went over like a bomb, which was fantastic. We could have gone up there and played nursery rhymes and still would have gone over better than what Queen did. Queen vowed they would never come back to Australia after that. Ladies and gentlemen, Rolling Stone. We were lucky enough in the early stages, we supported the Rolling Stones, which was a really good feather in our cap. That was probably our milestone in so far as the band getting a bit of prestige, and we worked pretty hard through that whole period and toured Australia, and all of that gave us profile. And then our first LP went gold, and from that we had enough legs and enough steam to succeed. Mushroom Records suggested that we do this song, that we were absolutely not really into doing the song at all, but we were kind of forced into doing it by the record company. One of Australia's top groups, it's Matter Lake and I Get High. Hated the song. Hated it. It was, you know, absolute trash. And that was totally against the grain of what we do. And I've had plenty of people through the years go, what in the fuck did you do that song for? Well, we were forced into it. But, you know, you win some, you lose some. And that wasn't me singing either. That was the extra crew. No, it wasn't me. Rock 
towards the end of that stage was where we were getting pretty, pretty browned off at the whole aspect of external control. You know, we we believed in ourselves, we believed in our music, and the the, the very fact that we are still as a unit, even though we don't perform all the time, the internals of the band is quite intact and quite uh, quite strong, and and as as uh, as strong as it ever was without any external forces really reacting on it. People have tried to read into Matter Lake lyrics time and time again, oh it means this and it means that. It's been an absolute laugh for us to hear what people think it, it means because they're totally wrong because it doesn't mean anything. And I mean if you look at one of our most popular songs, 12 pound toothbrush, there is no mention of toothbrushes in that song. It's got nothing to do with anything. The, the, the title of 12 pound toothbrush, all that was, was, a, was a put on to any DJ and it was an absolute cat to us to hear a DJ seriously introduce a song as 12 pound toothbrush. Beautiful, worked like a gem. We laughed ourselves stupid, and they were serious about it. Here's a song called 12 Pound Toothbrush. What's it got to do with 12 Pound Toothbrush? Nothing. You never want the, uh, the party to end. Um, obviously I'm getting older and everybody else is getting older and you can't, you can't flog a dead horse all the time. But uh, the thing that is, is the, uh, the thing that I like about it is even though we don't regularly play, we regularly get together and play music within ourselves and write stuff, still have a great time. With the last CD that we did, which was World, uh, we spent three years on that doing it whenever we could and uh, that's all out of the way and now we've, we're just going to continue on again. And whether it makes, well, I mean, world didn't, wasn't a world beater and, and get played on mainstream radio, although we've had a bit of radio play. We couldn't give a rat's ass about that, the fact that it didn't uh, go anywhere. We had great fun doing it. And, and again, it's to a certain degree, uh, we don't need the rest of the world to feed us. We can feed ourselves, which is fine by us. You know? We enjoy it. If we don't play, it doesn't kill us. You know, we're still alive, we still play our music. It's great. And the famous chord. Better noise.